Hi there, my name is Kayla Mallon, and welcome to the MobiMax Cognitive Skills Science Curriculum video. This first of its kind science curriculum is not only fun, but it leads to deeper student mastery. With thousands of cognitive skill manipulatives, your students learn to be better problem solvers, critical thinkers, and creative geniuses. So, what are cognitive skill manipulatives anyway? Cognitive skill manipulatives are what makes learning science with Moby so compelling. We've created a huge variety of question types based on over 30 different cognitive skills. Skills including hypothesizing, probing, charting, deducing, and so many more. Let's first talk about the cognitive skill to deduce from a principle. Here, students see examples of how a tomato looks different under white, red, and green lights. Now, students must deduce what a tomato will look like under a blue light. Students then draw on the information they read from the previous page about how the tomato looks when it reflects different colors of light. They look back and remember the tomato looked black under the green light because there was no red light for it to reflect. The student must think through the problem and then deduce that under the blue light, just like under the green light, the tomato will probably appear black because again, there is no red light to reflect. And this question takes it one step further and asks what color the leaves will appear. Since they're green and the light is blue, there is no green light to be reflected either, so we know the whole tomato will appear all black. But even if they make the wrong deduction, that's okay. Getting things wrong is part of the learning process, and the answer feedback will reinforce this main idea the student is grappling with. In this problem, students are asked to categorize colors of light as either a primary color or a secondary color. See how the student gets to create this chart and categorize the different colors. The manipulative uses the concept of trial and error to teach the student what is a primary color and what is a secondary color. Notice when I make a wrong move, I get immediate feedback and know it belongs in the other chart. Students get to use the information they just learned and manipulate the material and then create their own mental schemas and organize this information. Analogies are powerful tools in aiding student understanding. Let's take a look at this analogy. Imagine your students making comparisons of the levels of the human body from a cell to an organism to the levels of organization in a country. Students need to think through the analogy as they manipulate the material. And again, students get immediate feedback on whether they're making the right moves in building this analogy. So we think through and discover, the cell is the smallest level of organization in the human body, just like a house. Then, we continue the same thinking and build the analogy from there, comparing the neighborhoods, cities, states, and country to tissues, organs, organ systems, and finally, the organism. Pictures say a thousand words. Hierarchies, of course, are great ways for your students to visualize how different ideas are related. But to have students spend the time and really study relationships in, say, a textbook is near impossible. That's why you probably spend a lot of time diagramming hierarchies on a whiteboard to make sure students are paying attention to those relationships. But with a cognitive skill manipulative, you achieve the same level of focus, but even more so because the student is the one building it. Take a look at this hierarchy of how plants are classified. When the student completes the hierarchy, it forces them to think critically about the relationship between different classifications of plants. And as you can see, they get immediate feedback on whether or not they're making the correct choice. Comparing and contrasting is a great illuminator for students. Here, your students compare and contrast how light reacts to a white and black surface. Students have the chance to construct the visual themselves. The student may come here and not really know the answer, but by manipulating the material, students are able to learn and think while working through the manipulative. They try the reflecting arrows on the black and discover that's wrong. The black actually absorbs the light. Once the student completes the manipulative, the student gets an explanation of why black and white surfaces react differently to light. 
When they get this additional insight, the student will remember the information because they manipulated the material and created the diagram. Let's take a look at our Apply Math problems. Math is a very important part of science, and we want to be able to practice math with science as much as possible. In this lesson, the student has been learning about carbon-14 dating. To add weight to this scientific concept, Moby has students apply what they've learned and do some math. Here, the student needs to figure out how to determine the age of a fossil by what they've learned about carbon-14 dating. When we read the problem, we see it tells the student that the fossil has decayed eight half-lives. And the student learned in the previous page that a half-life equals approximately 5,730 years. The student will realize they need to do some math and multiply 8 times 5,730 to get the correct answer. But even if they get the question incorrect, the answer feedback will help reinforce this scientific concept and the math. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the MobyMax Cognitive Skills Science Curriculum. Get ready for your students to start loving science.